Hello friends, thank you so much for your overwhelming response to my previous videos on Social Auditor Certification Examination, uh, which is the latest series started by NISM and it's called as NISM Series 23. In this particular video, I am going to take you through some important questions related to Chapter 7 and this time you are going to get 20 questions uh, and not 10 questions as I usually put in my videos. So be ready to uh, you know go through some of the most interesting questions as we move ahead. My request to all of you would be to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Trust me, this gives me uh, encouragement to come out with more videos and I can assure you that going ahead I will be making more and more videos on different modules of NISM, IIBF, FRM and other relevant examinations. So with this I move on to the question 1 which is about which of the following is not a step in, involved in social impact assessment. So as most of you would know that social impact as assessment is a multi-step process and involves uh, various activities within that. So we have four options. The first is setting objectives. Second is analyzing stakeholders. Third is mobilizing resources. And fourth is verifying and valuing the impact. So if you see these four options, it's very obvious that mobilizing resources is not part of social impact assessment. Uh, and it's not a step involved. So what's the answer? The answer is C. We move on to question two, which is about setting relevant parameters by which social enterprise will plan its intervention. You know, if you are going to set relevant parameters, okay, uh, where is this going to be used? So which of the following step of social impact assessment is described by the above mentioned statement? So once you are setting those parameters uh, out of the various steps, which is the step that those parameters relate to? So you have four options setting objectives, analyzing impact, measuring, monitoring and reporting. And it very obviously appears that measuring is what, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, will be used when you are setting relevant parameters, right? So we move on to question three now, which is, which of the following approach of social impact assessment uses surveys and statistical data analysis as method of assessment? So you are using, uh, uh, two methods here surveys and statistical data analysis in fact you can use multiple methods uh, some could be qualitative some could be quantitative some could be related uh, to monetization so here uh, the answer that we have is uh, quantitative so quantitative method would use surveys and statistical data analysis with this we move on to question four which of the following parameters is not used in a back or ratio so back or ratio uses a couple of important parameters. Obviously, what it does not use is called as the operating leverage. So please do read more about back or ratio, uh, <clears throat> which is given uh, in the uh, seventh chapter. And you need to know what exactly it does because you may have questions related to this in the exam. Let me quickly move on to question 5, which is about which of the following models for structuring evaluation handles conflict of interest in best possible way. So, you know, when you are uh, structuring the evaluation process, there could be a conflict of interest uh, uh, between two different entities. One is the enterprise and second is the entity which is going to, you know, provide support or some kind of a help to you. So here, uh, the conflict of interest is avoided in an outsourcing model. So outsourcing model typically will take care of conflict of interest. Uh, we move to the next part, which is about in which of the below mentioned methods, procedural and organizational arrangements covering environmental, economic and social indicators are incorporated to capture data at similar points in time. So uh, there are four methods which you will come across in the NISM material also. But when it comes to this particular uh, part, it's very obvious that it will be C, which is known as the fully integrated model. So we are done with six questions and I'm sure you are uh, enjoying uh, this uh, series of questions that I put in the video. I will request you also to subscribe to my video, uh, subscribe to my channel and like my video. Let me proceed to question number seven. So dash 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 or hyphen 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 is 
an impact accounting system which can be used by impact investors to measure manage and optimize their impact remember this is an accounting system that we are referring to and this is more of a conceptual question so the answer for this is a which is irris plus uh, this was more to do with you know kind of uh, remembering this aspect right so let me move to question 8 which of the following methods of uh, social impact assessment uses focus group and case studies earlier we spoke about uh, statistical analysis more of statistical analysis here we are talking about focus groups and case studies and obviously such things will go into the quantitative method uh, sorry qualitative method and that's why the answer is b uh, having looked at eighth question let me take you to the ninth one which of the following methods help in measuring indicators of social change such as behavioral change or psychological change right so here we are going to uh, you know uh, basically gauge behavioral or so psychological change and they're not easy to do as all of us know so this is something which can be uh, done through what is called as the qualitative method so the answer is b again uh, let us move on to question number 10 and we are now kind of halfway through so which of the following model is used by social venture capital firms and or impact investors to track regular progress on their investments in social enterprises and ensure sustainability of these social enterprises so typically what they do is that they use fully integrated model uh, my suggestion to all of you would be to read all these four models in detail and see various aspects of these models because you may have multiple questions related to this also Question number 11, which is very straightforward. How many dimensions are used by IRIS to measure impact management project? So earlier we uh, you know, learned about IRS, IRIS being an accounting uh, kind of a system. Now we are talking about how many dimensions are there. So the answer is D, which is five different dimensions. Now having said this, let us move to question number 12, which is how many categories are available under GRI standard? So GRI is a global standard as many of you would know or rather all of you would know and it uses different kinds of categories you know uh, which are uh, comprehensive as well as focused okay so focused could be on a particular area like healthcare uh, and comprehensive could be the entire universe where uh, you know this GRI standard is being used so basically there are three different categories which are there and please do read about these categories which are mentioned uh, in the NISM textbook because there may be questions related to that, that again. Okay, which of the following is not covered under principles of UN Global Compact? Okay, which is called as UNGC. So under UNGC, what is not covered out of the four is the social welfare. So we have human rights, we have labor, and we have anti-corruption covered under that. The next question is about social impact assessment again, and it's a process of assessing direct indirect intended unintended and <clears throat> what could be the uh, aspects here so it is positive negative negative consequences only or negative impact the answer is c which is positive negative consequences please have this particular question also very clearly understood by reading more on the textbook so that you get an idea about what exactly <clears throat> are the positive and ne negative consequences that we have now we want to question number 15 where there are two statements given which are those statements which of the following statements are true in context of approaches to social impact assessment question statement one many social changes indicators like indicators of behavioral change or psychological change are difficult to quantify or monetize and the second is quantification approach only captures the number of beneficiaries impacted which is a very narrow approach to social impact so basically both a and b are correct and that's why the answer here would be a so you may get many questions like this in the exam where you will get two options and you will have to select which of the two option is correct so please do read things in detail so that you are able to answer the questions correctly uh, what is the time frame within which programs such as health initiative or microfinance program show impact so there is a tentative estimate uh, regarding this and the time frame is three to five years that's that's what will be applicable here in which of the following forms uh, <clears throat> can impact reporting be done okay so uh, you can have an independent impact report it can be part of annual report it can be part of 
sustainability report or all all the above are true so the answer is d so impact reporting can be done in all three ways what about question number 18 so which of the following is our issues challenges in conducting uh, social impact audit social spelling is unfortunately not correct so please read it at social lack of standard use of terminologies lack of standardization of reporting framework and lack of common measures within sector or all of the above of needless to say the answer here is again d we move on to question number 19 which is the followed by a blank column is a platform created for professional from diverse sectors to channelize their services to undeserved society uh, obviously it is indian social responsibility network or isrn as it is called as and then we move on to question number 20 and as i have said earlier also we will get two options you have to select which is the right one so which of the following is limitation of outsourcing model for social impact assessment uh, smaller organizations which are dependent on donations and grants lack resources to hire external agencies for conducting sia and organizations implementing social intervention has more clarity and connection uh with the community and pre and post social intervention situation so uh, for the previous question the answer was correct was both of them now thank you so much for your time uh i hope you like this video uh, please subscribe to my channel and also like this video and share it with your friends thank you so much for your time